The detention centre for immigrants, as you just heard, has been described as a place of national concern after inspectors found it was failing vulnerable women. Let's catch up with the weather. Here's Carol. Morning. Good morning, both. Good morning to you as well. Well, today, for many of us, the weather is set fair. There'll be a lot of dry weather around, some sunshine. Some of us already have that, but it is a chilly start to the day. There's some patchy fog. Both of those will give way to brighter and warmer conditions. Now, as ever, we've got an exception to the rule. First one is across the north of Scotland. Here it's breezy with some showers and some drizzle. But we've got this waving front still with us across the southeast of England. By waving, it means that at times it's going to wiggle backwards and forwards, bringing in rain as it currently is doing. We've had some heavy rain this morning across parts of the southeast. But away from that, a lot of blue skies, a bit more cloud across northwest Scotland, some of that across northwest parts of Northern Ireland as well, but not particularly spoiling the day. So as we go through the day, for some southern counties, we could still catch a shower out of this cloud and it will tend to be bright rather than wall to wall blue skies. And you can see the extent of the cloud moving all the way down towards southwest England. North of that, for Wales, for the Midlands, for Northern Ireland, for Northern England, we're looking at sunny spells. And in light winds, it will feel quite pleasant. It's the same for much of Scotland, but it's the northwest that's prone to the thicker cloud and some drizzle and also some showers, the showers predominantly across the Isle of Skye and the Outer Hebrides. Now, as we head through the evening and overnight, we still will have a lot of clear skies around for southern Scotland and northern England in particular. So here are the best areas to see the meteor shower. And the time that's really good for looking out for that is between 11 at night and 4 in the morning. If you do see it, please send us your pictures. But we also have our area of low pressure moving closer to us in the south, dragging up this humid air from the near continent. So tonight we are looking at some thunderstorms developing initially in the southwest of England, but they'll spread a bit more towards the east as we go through the early part of tomorrow. And through tomorrow, the whole lot are going to drift further northwards. Now, we have the potential here for some torrential downpours, large hail and a lot of thunder and lightning. Not all of us, by any stretch, We'll see them. They are going to be fairly hit and miss. There are going to be very humid conditions around them too. Although we had highs up to 24 in the chart, we could see 27. At this stage, it looks like the southeast could well miss them, but not necessarily stay dry later on in the day. But the best weather will be across Scotland and also Northern Ireland. So as we move through Thursday evening into Friday morning, you can see how those thunderstorms continue to travel northwards, eventually getting into Scotland, getting into East Anglia and still some torrential downpours. Even by the time we get to Friday, we'll have them. The first batch moving northwards, then with further downpours developing across southern England, well, we'll see some homegrown thunderstorms as well. But again, not all of us will see them. Now, the Met Office has some yellow warnings out for those, and it is just to highlight the risk that we could see some localised flooding. And as a result, there's a potential for some disruption to travel. But out towards the west, drier and brighter, not as humid, and that leads us into a more settled weekend, Billy and Lou. That would be nice. You Wouldn't want the it? calm after the storm. Yes, indeed, it would be. And it won't feel as humid either. OK. Thanks. Carol, thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, China's central bank has cut the value of its national currency, the yuan, again this morning after record devaluation yesterday. What's going on? Victoria can tell us. Mm, well, a big interesting moves going on in the currency markets at the moment because that decision actually caught all the markets off guard yesterday. So what on earth is going on? The economy there has been slowing, exports are down, and China needs to take drastic measures if it wants to hit its growth forecast for the full year. Now, by cutting the value of its currency, they cut the value of the goods and they make them cheaper and more attractive to buy abroad. But of course, that means that the goods that we make here might not look such good value to anyone buying. So this has big implications for our trade with China and with the rest of the world. Now, elsewhere, after selling off the Financial Times to the Japanese last month, uh, the world's largest education company, Pearson, has now sold its 50% stake in The Economist Group. That includes the magazine. An Italian company called Exor has agreed to pay just shy of a quarter of a billion pounds for the group. 
and the financial markets are digesting Greece's new £60 billion bailout deal. The stock markets in Athens are rising, but other European markets fell yesterday, worried about some of the details of that deal. Now, the Greeks have to vote in the parliament today on whether or not to approve that new deal. Now, that's all your business news for now. There's more from the BBC Business Live team over on BBC News at 8.30 with the uh, birthday boy of the day, Ben Thompson. Oh, yes. Happy birthday to him. I had noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It's the busiest time of year for Britain's airports, of course. It also means...